First, what is the difference between the two? The clean style and the painter style. The business for the clean style method is that with the ambient occlusion shading, which I'll show you later, it will allow you more freedom to change up the types of mood and direction of lighting that you want in your art like this. However, the painterly style, it is much more complex, like try to think of it almost as traditional painting. It is very abstract, it's a messy style, and in my opinion, this method gives me more freedom and is very challenging. You can still achieve a cleaner look using the painterly method but in my opinion it just takes more time to clean up the lines and vice versa. You can achieve a messier look using the clean method by adding more abstract strokes. Okay so let's start off with the clean style method. Start off with a base sketch or draft. It doesn't have to be perfect it's just a way for us to dump our ideas down. Now we refine our ideas into the line art. It doesn't have to be the cleanest line art you just have to be readable and understandable to the audience eye. And don't skip this bit because it's very important to clarify your sketch because trust me it will save you hours down the road. Next is to fill in your base layer. What I like to do is set the line art to linear burn. You can do multiply, I just find that linear burn makes the lines more saturated compared to multiply which is more dull. Either way, you can choose between the two. I put different objects into the separate layers just in case I want to change up something and it's just much easier that way. The next step is ambient occlusion, which is a type of shading. It is a shading technique to make 2D objects look much more 3D. The shadows created are soft shadows. So first understand that the direct light is like from a single source, for example sunlight. Now direct light create harsh shadows or sharp edges. For the ambient occlusion shading, the image has no direct light, so no hard shadows. Everything must be shaded sort of in a soft shadow. The only light source should be your eyes or your gaze. Now I've learned this from Mark Brunette's video, so I'll link his video in the description. He explains that much better than I do. So when our gaze is our only light source, the closest area to our eyes will be the brightest. You can see from this point of view, these parts that are further away, will be less bright and more dark and shaded. With this, you can clearly see that 2D shape become more 3D. Now the three rules that you have to follow, again I learned this from Mark's channel. Okay, three categories. Number one, the first rule. Overlap. Ask yourself, which objects are closer to your eye? This one. So the shadows will occur on the farther object. Clearly, now with the shading, you can see that there is more depth between the two objects. One appears to be further and one appears to be closer. Number two, the second rule. Overlap, but further. This time, the two objects are very far apart farther than the previous one but still it overlaps when we see it in this view so I would like to shade the farthest object but lightly this time to indicate that the distance between the two objects are pretty far apart. Notice that for the overlapping number one it produces stronger and darker shadows and the shadows tend to be more compacted and the number two image it produces lighter shadows and the shadows tend to disperse and appear more softer. So just keep in mind of that. Lastly, close. The third rule. When two objects are close and when they are parallel to each other in a bird's eye view, not behind or not in front, they create a shade over here. And the more closer the objects are, the stronger the shade, the more far apart the lighter the shade. Now let's see how I applied it to my character, my drawing. The face. So for the face I tried to imagine that the face is one simple egg shape. The closest area to my eye or my gaze would be over here. The farthest part will be more shaded. I did this by shading it like this. The face now looks more 3D, right? Okay, same with the hand. If I try imagining a side view of this, this part of the arm will be closer to my eye. The other parts will be farther, so I'll shade this area. Now the head and the rest of the body. Try thinking of the overlap technique. The head is pretty close to the neck and the rest of the body, so the shadows will appear as strong. The face is 
closer to our eyes so we shade the object that is the farthest and boom same with the hair it is much closer to our eye than the face so we shade that again the arm is closer to our eyes than the shirt but the distance between the two is pretty far so i would shade it much lighter and make the shadows more dispersed and soft third roll close the fingers come into contact with the face so a shadow will occur over here now without these roll your art would look totally flat this was a before and i only made adjustment using the airbrush and a few more cleaning up but wow little changes make a vast difference look at this before and after before and after before and after and before and after yay remember if the image has very hard shapes or shadows then you will be more limited to change up the lighting you can still change it up but it just wouldn't visually make sense now that the ambient occlusion shading is done we will move on to the blend modes and lighting let's look at three examples low key normal like indoors and high key so the low key the image will be very dark like nighttime for low key art i'm adding in the shadows and i just use a multiply layer like this the first multiply layer i'm darkening the image and then i'm adding another multiply blend mode layer to emphasize more of the shadows i've already thought about my direction of light here and then afterwards you can play around with changing the colors or the tone of them by going to layer new correction layer and tonal curve or you can choose any between all those ones okay high key so high key is like a picture that is mostly exposed to light to bright light just think of the image having lots of white in it first i'll add in a light blue and set that to multiply to darken the image just a wee bit and then i like to erase the top like this just slightly with an airbrush so that adding a white light but i just set it to normal because i'm using the color white i'll add a third color for the transitioning between the light and shadow the transition is called the terminator and it is a zone of transition between the light and shadow it's a dark strip of color that outlines the shadow or sometimes you see that glowy like orange on the face between the light and shadow after that i'll add another lighting i like to use this to describe the surface of something for example like the closest matte compared to the ring which is shiny but if i take away that shininess it will look matte so this sort of lighting i like to use to express the type of material if it's shiny or matte the last one normal as you can see i just kept the original shading like this here are two examples you can see i just slapped on a preset background so the low key i add in multiply and work in the shadows and the high key i like to add in lighting and use blend modes like glow dodge overlay or add or sometimes normal if i'm using the color white like this one over here okay so the painterly stuff now let's start off where we left off the base color layer for us, I like to keep the face line art on a separate layer because things get a little messy over here. Then we go into planning. So I like to ask myself, what type of environment are they in? Are they outdoors or indoors or at the beach? Where is the direction of your lighting? Because this will affect how intense your shadow and the direction of your light. So the direction of the light is very important as it can signify and tell the audience what time of the day it is. Like for example, when the direction of light is pointing down, it could be daytime. And if the direction of light is low, you can easily tell it's like sunset. In this case, the lighting comes from this way and everything that the light doesn't touch becomes a shadow. You can see that it is a bright sunny day and he's under a roof, which is why it creates this type of shadow. And when I shade my shadow, I tend to find that turning off the base color layer and working in my shadows from there, it's much easier for me. I usually pick up a mid-tone grayish yellow and set the layer to multiply. And feel free to change out the colors in some areas if it doesn't feel right. Like I did over here where it has cooler shadows on the clothing and a warmer purple on the skin. I'm still keeping in mind of how light affects the shadows. Shadow on the skin will appear more warm and reddish due to the blood that we have in all that we have in us. Then I'll add in the terminator. 
Using the terminator, it will prevent your art from looking sort of muddy. And after that, I just add more details and do more touch-ups to it. And during this process, I constantly think about the light and shadow family. It's super crucial to understand where light is heading and where your shadows are. The areas of light will never be as dark as the areas in the shadow. And the areas in the shadow will never be as light as the areas in the light areas. If you don't do this, then your art will look something like this. So in order to keep this from happening, I like to set a grayscale layer on top of all my layers. To do this, you set a new layer, set it to the color white, and then set your blend mode to color. And that's basically it. Now, which one should you use? In my opinion, I would recommend the clean method because it's very beginner friendly. I like to use this when I'm unsure of how I want my drawings to look like or if I'm not sure of what type of lighting I want to use in my art. However, I love the painting style method. It's challenging, but this is very hard to pull off. And most likely if you do it wrong, your art will turn out messy. But it doesn't mean that you should avoid it because Remember, we learn the more we attempt it. So I'll tell you what you need to keep in mind. Just need to think about what is the environment or where are they at? Where is the direction of your lighting? And sort out your light and shadow family. Keep this in mind and you'll produce clearer and more appealing art. If you want to learn more about color and light, visit Marco Bougie's channel where he explains everything in depth. Now, you might think that the two methods, the clear style and the paintering method is similar, which is sort of is. The only difference is that the paintering method, it just jumps straight into coloring and lots of things going on like the light and shadow, the direction of light, all at once. But the clean style focus on the ambient occlusion shading first. The advantage of this is that you can change up the direction of your lighting and the mood very easily. Unlike the painter style, it's just almost like traditional traditional painting, very hard to change out. So you have to be clear of what you want your art to look like. Okay, so that's all the two methods that I use. It helped me make much clearer art and yeah, that's all. Hope you learned a lot. This was such a long video. Okay, bye.